I'm curious about one aspect of, of when you were progressing and focusing on powerlifting. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like, obviously, with social, like you feel like you need to keep getting stronger and people need to see you getting stronger. Do you think that if you slowed things down, things could have gone, like things could have been smoother? Or did you just lose interest after a certain period of time? So you're like, let me switch. Because like, if you slow down, you can be safer. Yeah. But most, like most people, if you want to get strong, you're typically trying to do it as fast as possible, which can lead to some just unsafe practices. It's what Mark was saying. Yeah. You're constantly trying to keep up with everybody. Okay. okay. If I never had access to the internet in SEMA, I could just sit in a black hmm. room uh-huh. and just train my face off yeah. until I was so strong I didn't even know any better. That's what I was doing <laughs> so for the- So Jesse t- Norris did. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's gonna, photo, yeah, no one is going to know that reference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Jesse Norris. Yeah. yeah, He was the hinge guy. <laughs> sure, that deadlift. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, um, I, I think that's, where I, that's why I was so strong going into powerlifting mm-hmm. because I just trained like a maniac. I didn't care who was watching. Yeah. And those were the funnest days I ever had was nobody cared. Mm. And so I've kind of gone back to that because I figured I don't want to put all my bodybuilding training on Instagram because it's not that fun. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants, not a lot of people are like super interested in seeing me do like lateral Here's my third set of 12. (laughs) Yeah, there's lateral raises till failure. You know what I mean? And I'm back to that fun element because nobody's watching and I'm just zoning out and enjoying myself, Yeah, you know? So yeah, I do think if I slowed down, uh, maybe did more cycles of uh, hypertrophy, I'll, I really wish I did that. Um, if I just took maybe huge blocks of hypertrophy and just made sure my tendons were keeping up with my mass and mm-hmm. my and the the lifts that I was doing, yeah. I probably would have lasted a little longer. I probably could go back if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. But you lifted some big ass weights though. I did. Yeah. You did lift over five hundred pounds or so, right? I in the gym is five hundred one. At mm-hmm. the me is like four ninety six. But you know that makes a big difference to us. Yeah. <laughs> like I think. Uh, yeah. I think that. I've, I'm so focused on bodybuilding. I really want to make a pro debut and I really would like to go to the Olympia. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I could do that, and I wouldn't. Are be, you in figure or bodybuilding? I'm in figure and physique. I actually won my physique. pro card okay. in both okay. at the NPC nationals, but I ended up being the overall champion for figure. So because I got a unanimous score in figure, I decided that's probably the direction I want to go into okay. and I don't have to grow anymore. Yeah, essentially. True. So with women's physique, it's pretty aggressive mm-hmm. and you have to put on a lot of mass. And I just figured, you know, it's not really in my interest right now. I don't want to get too much bigger. They still have women's bodybuilding because they yes, got they do. rid it's of back. some of it it's for back. a bit, okay. right? It's back, okay. yeah. Hunter Henderson's female bodybuilder. Cool. Yeah. Right. Also a power lifter. Mm-hmm. Also strong as shit. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. strong. How but, did you deal with uh, doing a bodybuilding show and then kind of like the rebound off of that? Because <sighs> sometimes that can be a... <laughs> Right? I'm looking at my friend because she knows she was there. Um, it's tough. It's tough. It's not like powerlifting. I mean, I, I go out of a powerlifting meet and maybe I'm weak for a few weeks. You know, I, I you're squatting like 275 and you're just kind of like whatever. Mm-hmm. But you you come back pretty fast and your body never changes, mm. right? Whoa, coming back and gaining weight is a whole nother thing. How much weight? It was rough. It was rough. I, I think I overshot my coach. Well, my coach and I overshot. Uh, he force fed me to to gain about twenty nine pounds wow. after the show, and I'm back down about nine from there. Okay, Our project fam. This episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot Shoes. We've been wearing these shoes for almost a year now. They're flexible. They have a wide toe box. They allow your feet to get connected to the ground, and they will make your feet stronger. And they don't look like. Sh- like a lot of these other barefoot shoes. Andrew, how can they get them? For the best barefoot shoes on the planet, and they also look really, really good, <laughs> head over to vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject. At checkout, enter promo code powerproject20 to save 20% off. Again, vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject, promo code powerproject20 to save 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's go ahead and get back to this podcast. Yeah, so where did you... Yeah, so you're tw- you were 29 pounds over stage weight, and you're like what 20 over now? Yeah, and you look you have a pretty good body composition. So this is where you feel good. I feel really healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think maybe five pounds less, and we'll go back into small builds. <laughs> it's always five pounds less. Five pounds <laughs> less or five pounds more. Well, we've got five about, pounds more on the bar. Five pounds less. We got about four or five weight. more weeks in my cutting phase. Yeah. So um, you look amazing. I don't think there's anything to fix. Thanks. So you look great. So don't worry about it. But you want to be a little underweight to go back into a building yeah, phase. You don't want to get fat. You know, getting too right. fat. You you could try to start prep, and it's end up being a thirty week prep, and that's that's mm-hmm. not fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bodybuilding is so, tough. 
You know, is, someone could be in great shape and someone could still say, you look kind of fat. And you're like, fuck, hey, really? It's a subjective sport. <laughs> Going back to what you said about my body image, I think that was you saying that. If I never did powerlifting, mm -hmm. I would never be able to do this because mm -hmm. I was not a naturally confident person. I mean, I had an abusive relationship that started this whole journey, right? So yeah. obviously confident people don't go into abusive relationships. So yeah, for me, the, the powerlifter, you know, time period really enabled me to appreciate strength. So when I'm back in the gym, 20 pounds, 25 pounds up from my stage weight, yes, it's hard to see yourself change like that, mm -hmm. but it feels real good to start, you know, incline pressing 175 again mm. and, you know, overhead pressing the big, you know, 70 pound dumbbells. And you're like, damn, I'm getting strong. Okay, like focus on the, focus on your performance again. Mm. Good, tap back into that. If I never had that, I see a lot of bodybuilding women. In fact, even some girls, because I just have that, I guess, maternal vibe, nurturing vibe. Even some of the girls I did my national show with have called me and, and they've had a lot of struggles getting back, you know, to that mindset of like enjoying training and not being so fixated on their abs and yeah. things like that. I never had abs. You know, mm -hmm. bodybuilding was the only thing that brought that out. So for me, I'm like, well, this is kind of how I I look. This is mm -hmm. my body. That body that they just showed on the screen, that's specifically for bodybuilding. That's a, yeah. that's a competition body. So you need to remember that that's not who you are. You cannot walk around like that all year mm -hmm. or you're going to kill yourself, to be honest. That, so. you know, what you were mentioning is really interesting about powerlifting because powerlifting is great because it's a performance-based sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's an aspect where you will be, you, you want to look good, but you don't have to be perpetually shredded all the time. Yeah. Whereas once you get into bodybuilding and then you get into that, you get stage lean. Mm -hmm. So many people have issues actually coming out of that and giving themselves an off season. Some never do. And I was curious about that with you because within, within that sport, People's off seasons, a lot of competitors isn't really an off season. Yep. It's like, how can I manage to stay kind of lean until I can just tell myself to prep again yep. and then get super lean mm -hmm. again, right? How do you escape that trap? Like, how are you personally trying to escape that? Because you need an actual off season and you can't be stage lean. Right. Do you find yourself mentally being called back to that body that you had on stage? Yes, uh, subconsciously. Uh -huh. But consciously, you know, I'm a coach. Yeah. I've been online coaching for six years and it's my primary business. And so that keeps me in check and in tune with the science. Mm -hmm. So I can't deny that I know that I would never allow a client of mine to, you know, perpetually be in that lean state. Um, I know about the basics of my hormonal health mm -hmm. at that state. And I know what that does to me. I mean, I get my blood work. Uh, we're both Merrick athletes, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I get my blood work done even more than quarterly. So uh, I know exactly where my stats are. And there's there's just no way scientifically I could look at that as a coach and justify keeping my, you know, my liver enzymes high or my kidney Um or my estrogen so low mm -hmm. and, and suppression of my LH. There's, and I'm sure the people watching you probably know all about that stuff, but um, those types of things for me are unacceptable. So yeah. whatever I need to do to be healthy, because you know, I know that those 10, 15 weeks of prepping are not healthy. Mm -hmm. So whatever you can do to mitigate mm -hmm. risks outside of that is what I have to do. Um, the mental aspect of it yeah of course there's there's many days where i look in the mirror and i'm like it would be really nice to be able to be photo shoot ready right now or have veins everywhere or, you know um and i see the girls that are in season right now i decided to take this season off so i could fix some things and uh heal some little minor dings injuries things like that and yeah. put on a little bit more mass on my shoulders and little things um fix my hormonal health mm -hmm. things like that hey how's it sorry I'm not going to whisper. <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying this content and we love talking to all these people and bringing you guys great information. So if you could help us out by hitting the like button, because that helps the algorithm, subscribe and hit the notification bell. We're going to continue reaching more people. and We're going to continue helping more people. Talk to you all later.